thank you today. We bless you for life, this health, strength, opportunity to get up this morning. We just appreciate you for all that you've done and all that you do, all that you will do. We pray your blessings, your guidance on this meeting today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, the topic of this workshop is discussion of Air Force. And um, <coughs> Taylor contacted me and said we can give a uh, presentation on what we might be able to do with uh, building Air Force. I'm going to let Tony go first. Okay, all right, Tony. Okay, I've something we've got to do. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, if you look at your, the uh, your packet there in front of you, we have a, a picture here. I'm, I'm more of a visual presenter, so I like to look at a lot of pictures when I describe things. Um, as you look at this, basically the supply chain and economic development has rail, um, port, and then you see trucking there. The only thing that's missing is the, um, the airport. So you look in terms of importing and exporting um, medical or critical manufacturing parts, the airport becomes critical. Um, and there's a connection. That dot is actually connected to the inland port. If you look at the second page, the other thing that happens when we import goods is we actually bring it in, in the container, store the container, and then at some point in time, we break down and distribute, or we may create some type of service where we assemble, reassemble um, a certain good to be distributed out. It could be a, a car, it could be a part such as an engine, um, and, and that's why the, the, the port, the inland port would be a magnet. Um, but the airport is very critical to that. Um, also, if you look at that third page, again, when I look at pictures, this would be a visual of what our inland port, very similar to what it would look like. What you see surrounding that are a lot of distribution, big box distribution, logistics. Now, what I'm saying is beyond that, what I envision is also uh, a very active airport, um, I would personally like to see the runway extended. Um, the leaders of Harbor Freight, they utilize a G5, uh, which is Gulfstream, a small jet. At least a G5, I think, is a 5,000-foot runway. They make G150s. Oh, they get by with 4,500. Yeah, they make G150s as well. But what I'm saying is it's not just um, passenger travel, but it's very critical to the, the functions of economic development. If history has taught us anything, we look at a place like Selma Hosiery that located here in Dillon because of the airport. It's very critical um, and I think we have some opportunities to attract um, some folks that have an interest in the inland port as well like DHL, like UPS, like FedEx um, to actually have some type of uh, um, hangar here at the airport to have a functioning uh, airport as well. Now this last page, I won't take too long, um, I use the term air park a lot. And basically what this is, is an industrial park located adjacent to an airport. And it, it especially makes it attractive if there's an interstate close by, which we have. And if there's class one rail close by, which we have. So if you look over by Wix, there's class one rail. You look over where Dillon Furniture is, the old Selma Hosiery, there's I-95. And then we have our airport. Beyond that, south of that, the next exit down, we have the inland port. So we have to connect those dots. And so again, I'm going back to this first page of these four squares of this puzzle to have world class, a world class supply chain and distribution and to ensure that we sustain an economic development for many years to come, these four dots have to connect. We got three of those dots, three pieces of the puzzle. It's only one piece that's missing, and that's the airport. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll, I'll turn it over to Mr. Taylor. Good morning, y'all. Good morning. I'm just going to briefly give you the same synopsis that I give. <coughs> 
two is economic investment. Questions I hope I answered. If you got any questions, I'll be glad to answer any of the rest of them. Uh, aviation, I've been in it all my life. The opportunity to see Dillon County. You know, if we look at our geographic, Marlboro County's got a very fine facility. Marion County's got a fine facility. They got a terminal building, they got 5,000 feet, but they don't have interstate. Marlboro County's the same. Lumberton does a pretty good business, but they have the interstate right side of the airport. When we ask the question, well, how are we going to do all of this? Over the years, when I was the airport <coughs> manager in Florida for 10 years, we took a place that was out eight and a half miles out of town, and we converted that to two new hangars, new terminal building, office complex, uh, went from 4,000 to 6,000. Of course, there was a little different scenario because all the money that was on that, there was five tracks of land and all the money that was raised, they had cane on that land, they had pasture on that land, and all the monies that accumulated went into that airport fund in the county. It had to be spent on that airport. I think when Roddy, we talked about as far as the Sapphire Aeronautics Commission, designated monies, said it's 150000 but that's designated for some projects that were going on. There's some projects, there was more money in that, but the projects were never completed. The projects were never done. Well, the airport, and the airport's not really closed. You can land there, but you land at your own risk. In the insurance industry, you have to have a minimum of 4,000 feet to meet the requirements of general aviation. They can land on 3,000. I've landed on less. But you just, your insurance is not covered. And that's, I know that we don't have that, but down the road we could have that. You ask where the monies are going to come from. Uh, there was two things that the Aeronautics Commission wanted. That was fuel, and that was a, some type of temporary terminal building or office building where they could have a bathroom or weather briefing and uh, so people can land and have some take take relax the relaxation. That's all they required for us to be able to get that hundred fifty thousand starting back. And then my understanding in talking to Columbia was once that we once the county went forth with that, then the airport would they would start back to funding. They were to give us hundred fifty thousand dollars every year is what I was told. Once this is done. So then and then, then we can designate that money as a as a board as a director or as a as a board to what we think needs to be best we can talk about what needs to be what is best needs to be spent on that to come up to where we're talking about and of course going to be a big deal I have talked to some of the representatives on the federal and the, on our congressional and senate side uh, and I did all this on my own but I've talked to them and knowing everybody wants to be tagged with the inland port because we know it's coming this is the golden opportunity this time right now is to, to be able to let them have a part of it and help us with the federal funding that we need. I really believe we can jump start what we need to do at the airport. Now, the gas and the fuel, I will not ask the county for any of that money. I've already got a promise that the money would come from somewhere else to put the fuel in. And we're putting Jet A in and low lead 100. Normally we just get by with low lead, but everything's running on turbines anymore, just about the corporate world uses. So you would have to have that. Uh, once we get, and you ask the question, well, where are we going to get these 10 based airplanes? And that's what South Carolina Aeronautics Commission says we have to have 10 based airplanes. And I've got enough friends that's got airplanes that we can put airplanes at the airport. Because you take that picture. They sign a lease with the county, they're going to pay us for a year. It doesn't say how long they're going to be there. It just says they're going to pay. They're going to have a lease. We're going to lease them a spot at the airport for a year. And they're going to sign a lease to that accordingly. So that's our 10 based airplanes. And when you do your 10 base and you take that picture and you send it to Columbia, some of Columbia sends it to Washington, we are now able to get our federal funding. The ball can start jumping. Uh, other things that I have talked to different individuals, uh, there's a possibility that we look at. And all these things are going to generate income down the road. None of this is going to happen like that. I don't want everybody to understand that. But down the road, uh, I talked to a guy that wanted to put in a flight school, and I've told you all this before. Uh, 
trains about 25 to 30 students every 90 days. Most of them from Central South America, some of them come up from England. But they do do that. That's something to look at. Still, that's kind of a decision. That ain't mine. What I'm saying is the people that made inquiries. One guy had a flight school he wanted to move from Florida to here. Miami, New York. Dillon County's halfway point. 95. You'd be surprised. I fly. I don't do. I don't have an IFR ticket, which means you fly instruments. I fly by the highway. I know where the signs is in Dillon County. I know where the red lights are. So, but a lot of people that's just out pulling around in the afternoons fly by, by, by the highways or by where they go. By the interstate. They know if you follow the interstate, it's going to go somewhere. Uh, we have another option. If you're flying into Florence, you got to fly into a control field. you got to talk to somebody on the radio constantly, all the time. Dillon County doesn't have that. I have a brother that lives in North Carolina, and I had two guys call me, one from Pope Air Force Base, that has three, they have three flying clubs. They've been landing in Clyde on a grass strip. They said they would love to land in Dillon if it was operating, and they'd buy fuel and stuff from us. Now, on that, in that being said, also, the Army over there has a couple, two or three flight schools, and they're looking for a place to go. You take Dillon County Airport, you go 100 miles up. This is what I did in Florida. You go 100 miles up, and you draw a circle all the way around. In that 100 miles, there's a lot of county airports. There's a lot of people with airplanes. There's a lot of people got, they like to get out and tool and fly. From, from a 100-mile radius of any of those places in there, within 25 minutes with a decent airplane, you're at Dillon. Well, how are you going to create all of this? You get on the telephone and you call and you go see and you do these things and you promote the airport. Then you get the, you get the people in the county involved. You start having things like mini air shows. You have car shows. Like anything that creates activity, bring them to the airport. Businesses like to be at the airport or close by to the airport. Why? I don't know, but they just do. It's something about being at the airport. I know you look at it now and you say, well, it's just out there. But I, you got to... There was a quote that was said, don't worry about what's at the point now, worry about what's down the road and what's coming. And that's what we've got to look at. Uh, I think there's a golden opportunity uh, for, for the airport to prosper. Uh, it's a heart and soul matter. Uh, and it's something that I've done all my life. And uh, I just want that opportunity, or somebody had that opportunity to help to see that done. Uh, Talking about it, we can go back one more time on the federal funding. I think when we talk to DOT, I mean not DOT, but to the Cyclone Health Commission, and uh, I don't think we can get 45. We can get a 4,500 feet, but we can only get a 4,200 feet. When when I say that, the runway can have 500 on this end towards nine, number nine. It can have a thousand on the other end towards 95. That gives you your 45, but they're not going to give. They're going to have a 300 foot threshold in there. Is what was told to me. For those that don't fly, that threshold is going to start at the very end. It's, it looks like arrows until it gets to that 300 feet and there's a white line across it. You're supposed to land beyond the white line. You can take off on the threshold all the way up the back, but you're supposed to land before. But hey, that's just part of pieces of the puzzle. You know, you can just, just whatever you want to do. Why do we have out there right now, Charles? We have zero. Uh, we got 3,000 feet on 3,000. 3, yeah. And you have to have 4,000? You need four. But the main thing, our concern is before we can do anything, we've got to get it back open. We've got to get it, we got to have a way to talk to somebody, and that's just a mere unicorn, so you can know that you're back on there. I addressed with Rodney on things that he was concerned about, the insurance, about this, that, and other. I said, all you need is, if I was lucky enough to have that position, I'll work, work through him. I'll handle all that burden for him. People have to handle the rest of it. I'll handle finding the money to do. There's monies out there. There's matching monies. There's a million dollar grant out there right now. You gotta match ten percent, but then you give me nine hundred thousand. But that money's there's monies out there. And you just gotta apply for those monies. That's what I did in Florida. I applied for those monies. And some we got and some we didn't. Uh, Can you use that money to extend the airport with? Well our federal funding will kick in on that. That's on I believe five percent and five percent and nine percent to the federal government. But, you, but to get the steps going, we need to get these processes going. You can, you know, we can also, I've talked to people, I've talked to one guy that's got a radio shop. He works for a guy that he's been working for him for 12 years. He liked to open his own radio shop. He'll put his own building up. But the county will give him a spot. He'll put his own building up. What it costs the county anything, and then lease it. 
You might give him a free year lease. And then after the start of the second year, he pays for it. He pays for that spot. Uh, we done that kind of deal. We give a guy, we give him a free year when we built the hangar. We give him a free year, and then after that, he started paying seven hundred fifty dollars a month. But I also helped him create business, bringing airplanes in. Uh, you get a, night, a man that's got an A and I. Richard knows about this. He works on airplanes. He creates traffic. He creates people coming in. Uh, there's just all kind of things that you can do to start it, and it doesn't cost a lot. It's just getting the thing started. So, anybody got any questions? Does anybody else in the order that we want input from everybody? Anybody got anything they'd like to say? Be ready. I'm ready. Thanks, sir. Appreciate it. Well, let me ask you one, Charles. Oh, for, him to let, for him to land that Gulf for Harbor Freight, he's got to have 5000 Well, I did some checking on that. Depends on what... That goes again, if they got a full crew in there or they already loaded down, if it's not, they can get in on that. we got good approaches on that in that airport. It would be a little different if you had cities you were worried about coming across the top of them. But he, he can get in on that. Because you know, they ain't going to be home two or three people, maybe four at the most. He can get in, but his insurance ain't going to cover him. No, I haven't checked on that. All I know is 4000 for general aviation and most turbo props. That's, what I, that's, the, that's going to the AOPA. Going to their, I'm going by what they say because I went online and talked to that to them about that. Good morning. I'm here because a hundred years ago, before <laughs> any most of y'all were here, I was appointed to the Dillon County Airport Commission. I don't even know if there's a record of that anymore. I don't even know if you know that there is a Dillon County Airport Commission. But it's way back before Hartsville became county manager and I've served on it ever since, supposedly. It has not met in so many years. I don't even know Hartsville's in, in his first term. It's the last time we've ever met. But uh, <coughs> during my, my life here in Dillon, I have made many trips to that airport as I am an ex-pilot myself. We have an excellent facility if it's maintained. It's an instrument approach out of Florence. A few years ago, I rode out there one night, and the beacon wasn't working. Oh boy, I called Florence, because I had a plane coming in, and I was going to meet somebody. They said, we're not aware that the beacon's not working. I said, okay, you need to tell the person I was waiting on, he cannot land in Dillon, the beacon's out. Right there at that moment, that's the greatest liability you could have in Dillon County. Had he approached that airport and tried to land and it listed as an airport with a beacon and no beacon shining and he tried to approach the landing and crashed, you wish you'd never heard the word airport. Because you're responsible for maintaining that airspace, that, that beacon, that tower, and that runway. And I've seen the runway so deplorable I wouldn't have put a lawnmower out there on it. Now, you have done some work to it. I will admit that. It has been some work done to it the last, what, a year? Uh, I think they re blacktopped it. But there's grass growing through it. It would still be a. I'm not sure I'd want to land my King Air on it. Let's put it that way. But over the years, I've watched County Council do at least three studies. Am I right here? On that airport. The last one cost you. Fifty thousand dollars? Three hundred thousand. Three hundred thousand. Excuse me. I'm way. I'm way off. I was going to say fifty and give you a break. But I know that the first one I ever saw cost twenty-five thousand. The second one cost. I believe maybe it's the second one I'm talking about cost fifty. And now we've done one for three hundred. And what have we done? Well, we got our three hundred back. Did you? The from there at all? Got it to us. They declined. They turned us down for building a new airport. And they reimbursed us right. for the money that we had spent. I saw a letter prior to that application for that new airport they had already denied it before you ever applied. So there was knowledge that that won't go out in no way. My point to all this is if we lose this airport, you won't get another one. If we don't do something to upgrade the airport, and they declassified, or what is it they call it? They, they, it off the they declassified it as of now. 
Is it declassified now? It's just a, it's just it's a county airport, but it's not. Uh, it's not, it's not listed in the book as far as it's a non-open facility. Well, if you lose it, you won't ever get funding. From you won't ever have an airport in Dillon County because you got one in London, Florence, Maine, and Brunswick. So I think if we're going to ever save it, now's the time to start working on saving. You've invested a lot of money in it. We know what it needs. And it's not an enormous amount of money to reactivate it. You can do it with a double wide trailer and, and obviously communications equipment you've got to have and a bathroom and the fuel supply. He just told you that he can get that done. And I understand. I understand it is a big thing to take on with all y'all got on y'all plate. I, ain't, I won't even try to go there. But an airport ought to be part of our economic development plan. We got it. It is a good thing for industry. I, I import fireworks. Okay, that ain't a big deal. You would think, guess where my importers have to come to? I have to go to either Florence or Lumberton. You think they want to ride 45 minutes or 30 minutes to meet with me? So we end up spending money in Florence and Lumberton to meet with our own suppliers instead of driving them all the way to Dillon. They fly over Dillon and go there. But like Marion, I, I, all my private pilots landings were mostly in Marion County and Dillon. Got a beautiful facility. Bennettsville uses this as an economic development too. They actually bring industry in and house them at the Bennettsville Airport in, uh, in office space while they're relocating and they provide office space, or they used to, I don't know what to do now or not. So it can be a very good economic development tool. I love Tony's plan yeah. of, of putting industrial park around it. It would be a great plan, obviously. We're talking lots and lots of money to do that. And I know that problem too. <clears throat> but I, I think we've got an airport. Obviously all your industry people want the airport in large. Uh, at one time, we were going to add a thousand feet to it. We, were, we even filled in the I-95 end of it. Do you, you remember that? And all that came from the interstate. They all did in there free just to get rid of it. And we were prepared to add that. I think we were going to add 500 to that end or a thousand. A thousand to that end. A thousand to that end. And somehow or another, it never happened. But had, had we had 4,000 feet and add 500 to the number nine, we have it. We got it. Because you can put a King Air in there and it'll be covered by insurance. A Learjet? I don't know. You can't. Huh? You can't. The only thing on the G5, the thing with the G5 was, you know, <laughs> I'm going by what AOP told me, but uh, I, I know that they can't work off of that. But they might be their insurance company requires them to have five. That's correct. But then, then you know, in talking to Harbor Freight and talking to Purdue, uh, they have smaller airplanes that say you just come to deal it would just maybe they wouldn't fly that day. And I give all of y'all one of these packets right here. I brought it up here to Jamie too. All of y'all got one of them and read the letter from Purdue. It was the best letter of all of them. And I think it really talked volumes of what they said they would do and not. And that's probably just some, that's probably not all they'd use it for. Look at the people to do business for them that would fly. And I also talked to Ron Barfield. Ron Barfield said a lot of these NASCAR boys that's got these young boys that they're teaching to fly or teaching to drive. They would probably use, they would come in, they, he, it would help him because he could have some different kind of races because they'd just fly them in and fly them out. The car's already to be here. So that's just, and then I guess Ron would be good to work with. And I think we've reached out to Ron before, the best I remember. But uh, I think it's a great opportunity. I don't, <laughs> I don't know when you can do it, but it ought to be on the agenda to do. Or, or you're wasting money. I mean, you, if we can't make it bigger and better, it really has no value at its moment, other than private pilots doing touch and goes or, or training. And so you, you've got to expand it to get any kind of commercial activity out of it. So anyway, that's my thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Griffin, you seem to know a lot. Would you like to get, put some input into this? No, man, I, I think you've done a good job. I'd like to know, did y'all know that the FAA actually done a uh, article on, on Dylan years ago. Yeah, I got that article. You got it where it done videotape on? Yeah, well, it's on YouTube. Yeah, it's on YouTube. I got it on my phone if anybody would like to see it. Uh, 
what, roughly 20 minutes or something yeah. like that, but I'd be more than happy to. It's just got a lot of history and stuff yeah. about the airport and different things that and other. You see, My dad flew out of there years ago when he went to work with Carl. We lived on the airport in 1960. That's been many years ago. Some of y'all were still children. Uh, Ryan, you got any? Yeah, I, I do, in fact. And all that was said here today, uh, you got to know as an economic development background, I agree with everything you said. I, I absolutely do. Uh, it will be a, a major factor in, in what we do moving forward with the Salmon Port. Y'all charge me to be prudent. So my approach is a little bit different, okay? It's an approach I want to apologize for them because we are spending uh, not our money, but spending the people's money. Uh, Mr. Taylor is right. There are federal dollars. That's what I did for Congressman Rice. One of the biggest things I, I did for him. Florence and Horry County got rewards on a uh, regular basis. Uh, not real easy yet, but you can get them. Uh, let me just go bullet, through bullet on this. I believe in the discovery stage. I mean, that's just my my thought. Uh, I have had talks with the public-private partnership. and uh, The sheriff, you, I'm going to just go through the bullet line. Sheriff identified fifteen thousand dollars that uh, unused money of a slot he didn't feel that that money will be gone in six months. Uh, talking to the public-private partnership, we could. My thoughts are extend that money to the public-private partnership. They indicated some interest of really taking hold of this and supporting whoever we hire if we decide to contract, supporting that person uh, uh, with with kind of what I call the management staff. But also, they indicated that some of the money they got, they could use to upgrade uh, the facility. Whether it's putting a, uh, you know, housing of office out there or what, but they did express some interest in that. Um, I think this position should report monthly to county council. I think that's a way to uh, to, to monitor the progress to make sure that this is a, a, a feasible, uh, just to prove on paper that it's feasible. I mean, I, I, I think we've got to get hardcore evidence, not folks saying I would use it, but actual contracts. And then evaluate it. And I believe after that evaluation, I believe that there will be overwhelming evidence that this is something we need to continue, probably on the permanent stage. But I, you know, my approach is just a little bit more prudent because we, we're dealing with folks' money. Um, absolutely going to be a viable airport, no question in my mind on what we got coming. I just don't know if diving in full speed ahead is the right approach at this time, but that's that, that that's my my take on it. Now Rodney, you said let them kind of run the airport. That means council would have to agree to let the partnership run the airport? I, I think that would have to be done that you if, if Y'all had comfort with that, but you'd have to agree for the public private partnership to kind of manage that thing, but report to you. I don't think you're giving up any any rights. You just I'm just wondering. I, mean, yeah, I, make I just think you're you're designating an entity to, to run that. Let me let me let me ask a couple questions. Yeah. Let me make a couple comments on uh, you know, concerning this. Uh, one of the things I thought of on the way up here and looking over some of the um, material that one got to think in terms that we have already have industries here and we already have CEOs that are flying over to the Florence area and have to either drive or run the car to come back over here. My point is this here, regardless whether we can get some um, intelligence or not, we still need to try to get our airport up and running to help those people that's already, that's came to Dillon County, that's already here in Dillon. I mean, we've got people now, again, that's, that's flying to Florence and driving from Florence to Dillon that Dillon County would be more user friendly to those people that has already showed us faithfully that they have made their home here in Dillon County. If we had an airport up and running here in Dillon County for they could just land here in Dillon. Um, I think we can do this and even even in terms of, of the money, I just think, you know, that we we can find the money, I think, in the general fund. Uh, when Clay was here, we know how the budget were. 
there were money spreaded pretty much in the general fund. And I think there's still money spreaded in the budget somewhere to, to get this airport up and running as to have a person or body and a building pretty much sitting there to, to start the grassroots efforts of it. You know, that's just that's just my thought here. I just think there the money there in the budget that's spread it out. It may not be uh, on a specific line item that may say for the airport, but I think throughout the budget, you know, that money can come together to get this done. And I agree with that. And that's I think, you know, what I put before you will accomplish just that. I, I'm not in disagreement with you. Can I have a question? Can I ask I'm just asking the way. I'm all I'm on the private partnership board, and uh, I don't know, and, and I and, and I enjoy that, and I think the airport will always be part of, or not want it to be part of the economic development. I think the two intertangle together, but I don't know of another county in the state of South Carolina that the economic development board has anything to do other than being part of the airport. It still all comes back to council, it comes back to the county administrator. All falls back in their lap and to the council lap. They are the governing body. And if I could ride in on his comments, my comments would simply be I agree that we as the county council, we should try to upfit it and get it running. And if there's any way that the private partnership can help us with some funds, then we'll be glad to welcome them, you know, to help us with whatever funds is possible. It's a lot easier, council, for seven people to make an agreement than, what, 20 or 30. Well, you just got to double deal. Yeah, that means to give them something. You got the board saying one thing, and they come into council, and yeah. but like Chairman Finkler said, we 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 the govern we the governing body, the governing body, and regardless of what comes down to y'all. But I do agree that we should get it up and running, and if there's funding that the private partnership can help us with, then we'd be glad to to receive those fundings. But um, and we all work together like a hand in a glove. But I mean, we all should respect one another. I think. And we have in the past, we've created a private partnership, so we showed our support towards them. And if there's any support they can show towards us to get this airport funding or whatnot, you know, we'd be glad to do that. Anybody, anybody else have any more comments? Well, I agree with what Mr. Shaker said a while ago. He said he was on the Dillon County Airport Commission. I served on that as a representative for the county council for about five or six years, and we did meet. And, um, we went through the process or we were here or we were meeting when they started the second application. The first airport study identified the area right past Harley Ridge Road that they wanted to put a 5,000 foot runway. And I think Mr. Will Marnett and a group of people, he chaired that committee and the council decided not to go forward with that. They did a second study and it cost Wilbur Smith did the study, it cost the county three hundred thousand dollars from the one cent sales tax money to do the second study. And you're right, Mr. Schaefer. They told us that they weren't going to approve it at the FAA level for, at that time. Well Wilbur Smith said they thought they could get it approved, so we went with the study. It's a great <coughs> location, but the federal government simply denied us and the South Carolina Aeronautics Commission also denied Dillon County. And they said they were not going to spend any money here on an airport, period. And that was the state and the federal. And we have since got back, I think they call it the NIFIUS, that we are on the NIFIUS now. NIFIUS. And that is at the state level. So we are receiving money. We lost a million dollar earmark from Congressman John Spratt. He kept it in the federal budget for two years because the FAA would not approve our building a new airport. And Paul Works was still there, and he also denied our funding or our approval for a new airport. So I think we need to reappoint the airport commission. I think the airport commission needs to bring a recommendation to the council. It's what I think, but I'm just one councilman. We have, don't have a functioning airport commission. I know Mr. Schaefer was on it last time. I was on it last time. I think some of the other people are dead. Or dead. That's what I was Johnny getting to. Brady. Johnny Brady. Johnny Brady. Doctor Stanton. Doctor Stanton. <coughs> Stan and a guy from Stan Lakeview. Uh, I can't remember his name, but my point being, if it's going to be a political decision without any input from pilots or anybody, fine. But it's whatever you want to do. But I think we really need to look at how we're going to extend that runway. That was 
what we were left with. We were denied twice as far as building the new airport. Yes, you can put five on one end and probably 800 to 1,000 on the other end. You can get 4,000 feet, and that's what we need to try to look forward to. I think we need to work toward getting the 4,000 feet. But uh, if you put gas in without somebody out there, that's a major mistake. Well, when I did the figuring on for the gas, I figured it to be self-contained. In other words, if you had a credit card, you'd be able to drop it in there and do that. Uh, if they landed somebody not attended. Uh, yeah, they have a attendance, shot off. Yeah, 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 the attendance uh, would be, I would assume, would be basically like the Marion County Airport. Somebody's there from 8 o'clock. To, to there you go from 8 to 5. And then uh, they got a call number. You call if you land there past hours. Uh, she's only seven or eight minutes away. And she can be, she can be there. Uh, she works uh, every day, Monday through Friday. And then they have what they call. They have two people that rotate the weekends. One works one weekend. One works the next weekend. Uh, I don't know all the perks and the details of it. I just know that's how they. I feel like Councilman Scott. We got a three thousand foot. Airport out there. It's doing nobody any good. Let's get it running. We got the best 3,000 foot airport until we can. And you'll create traffic, you know. And, 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 it, and it may be that you just put in low lead 100 to start with. It. Yeah, let me make this comment. Excuse me, sir. Let me make this comment if I, if I may. I agree with Council Dolphin. If Citizen Dillon County has elected us as a governing body and we are in a position to lead, I think what we need to do, we need to go ahead and and take the reins in our hands and lead on this airport. I mean, listen, we've got a lot of stuff going on in Dillon County, a lot of the positive stuff. I just believe that Dillon County is in a position that they've never been in before. We've got the Inland Port coming. We've already got Wayman Garden. We've already got a lot of plants in. So we should need to go ahead and we need to go ahead and go for it and move and lead and get this airport up and running until we can get funding and everything to get it the way we want it. Unless we lead, there's no need us creating a, a why are we going to create a commission when, when we don't have nothing open? Once we get it opened in here, we need to establish and reappoint the commission and get that commission up and running. Until we take the initiative to lead and get things running, then we're not going to get anywhere. This is just going to be a conversation. And I did have names put together, and I did leave Councilman Moody on there for the, for, to be the spokesperson for the council. Uh, and if we get the commission started back, uh, we will meet on a quarter basis or every two months, whatever it takes. And uh, I'll cook the meal. How about that? But I think everything needs to probably need to be re um probably need to be a, a new ordinance or unless you can find old ordinance concerning the airport and the paperwork and the commission that was done. And I think everything just needs to be upgraded and there need to be probably some reappointments or some more appointments concerning that commission. But I think again we need to go ahead and get up and start running with what we got so we can get all that stuff in place. So what are we proposing? Um, everything you're talking about is going to involve cash. You're going to have to have, if, if what I'm hearing you say is that you want to put in gas, you want to put a building out there, you, um, I, I'm assuming personnel. So how much money are we talking about? But what are you talking about? We're not talking about the gas, because I think there's, it was understood from the presentation that I've, I've heard earlier that there are an avenue for the gas, yeah. probably for the pumps and all that. I think we need to go ahead and, and get personnel, uh, go ahead and uh, advertise, and get us personnel, get somebody out there, get us a building, and get it open. And then we can go there from there with whoever is the direct is, along with our administrator, to seek funding to get everything, or to start trying to get everything in operation like we need. But I do think we need to start with uh, advertisement and we need to start trying to get somebody there, identify some funds. Again, I just believe that in the budget, knowing how the budget worked before you got here as the intern, I just think we've got funding at least to try to get, you know, to get, get personnel out there, to get a bill to get yeah, money. That 270000 we had to pay Congress, where'd that come from? Was it in the budget? Uh, no, that was probably actually we put that down as so. a uh, Negative. Yeah, and bring you back to comment. That has been sent back to comment. Mm -hmm. Any more discussion? Mr. Chairman, probably appropriate. 
I like to add it to the agenda for our regular meeting tomorrow. Okay. And we um, go ahead and make it vote it up or vote it down. And have our county administrator start taking applications. Okay. If it passes. If it passes. You add that to the agenda. Any more discussion? Any motion to adjourn? Don't move. Second. Second.